Newcastle United return to Premier League action tomorrow as we travel to Villa Park to play Aston Villa at quarter past eight at night. It's a long one for the supporters, but you can bet we'll be there in our thousands. So not only do we have a match preview for today, but we have transfer news as Newcastle United have reportedly made an offer for Aston Villa's Jacob Ramsey. Funnily enough, it is Aston Villa's player. Eddie Howe's already downplayed this transfer move. We've got injury news for Aston Villa tomorrow. And let's be real, it doesn't look that good. And absolutely superb news as Newcastle United have confirmed that 17-year-old Lewis Miley is signed a long-term contract contract at the club this kid has the world at his feet we'll get into every single one in detail of course we'll get on the news first then the match preview for Aston Villa tomorrow without further ado let's get into the video Reith then lads and lasses, how we're doing and welcome back to the channel. We've got a lot of news to unpack today. Of course, we have got the match preview for Aston Villa. But funnily enough, some transfer news, which let's be real, it's been such a boring transfer window for Newcastle United. Not been any incomings, not been any outgoings. It's just been pretty dire, pretty much what we expected. But could Miguel Almiron still go to Saudi Arabia? But we've definitely got some news from David Ornstein of The Athletic on Jacob Ramsey to Newcastle United. Before we unpack that, and of course, Lewis Miley, an injury update, and of course, the match preview. Like if you do enjoy the video of daily content coming up of course as always on the Geordie Josh channel subscribe if you're new around here for daily news and all the rest of it we'll be going live tomorrow for the match as well without further ado let's take a look and David Ornstein of course of The Athletic he's probably one of the most reliable journalists that there is out there has said that Newcastle United have made an approach for Aston Villa's midfielder Jacob Ramsey now this lad is a very very talented player 22 years old I believe he is that's just off the top of my head I could be completely wrong but uh, he's an English midfielder centre mid we all know how Eddie Howe Loves his English players. Very, very talented player. Scored a fair few goals last season. Haven't seen too much of him this season, but of course he is still a very talented player. Now, this one doesn't really sit right with me. I mean, he's going to cost a lot of money. We can't really do it. Um... I don't know where this has come from, but of course it's come from a very reliable source, but it's still mysterious. He's not a defensive midfielder, which is what we need right now. Why do we want an attacking midfielder? We don't play with a 10. Why do we want a sort of box to box? We need a defensive midfielder. This is pretty, um, such a, it's a priority and it looks like it's not going to happen whatsoever. The transfer window's coming to an end. No one's going out and as we know right now, we have to sell to bring players in and it doesn't look like it's going to happen whatsoever. Jacob Ramsey, if Newcastle United somehow pulled off this transfer, like I say, he's going to cost a lot of money. Do Aston Villa even want to sell him to a complete rival? They know he's going to have a fantastic career. He's going to come on to be a fantastic player. I don't believe it's going to happen whatsoever. It'd be a very obscure one but nevertheless if it did happen of course we'd back him 100% and any, any signing that Eddie Howe makes would be absolutely superb as we all know they have been superb moving on to why Eddie Howe's already just sort of downplayed this but we've got to take that with a pinch of salt yet again I think it was Correct us if I'm wrong, but I think it was Keith Downey who asked the question, you know, Jacob Ramsey has been rumoured to Newcastle United, what, can you give us any sort of clarification on that? Eddie Howe straight away said, um, that's incorrect, that's all he just said, incorrect, with a straight face. And to be fair, that probably means that he's signing tomorrow. To what Eddie Howe also gives us, it's an indication of just that it's not true. Everything that he says, we can always have to take with a pinch of salt in the transfer news. He just never tells us anything, does he? And funnily enough, Keith Downey has gone a Matthew Target loan switch to Celtic, which I'd never heard of personally. And um, Eddie Howe says that he's way off, which I do believe that 100%. He's, he's been injured for a very long time. That would be a very daft move to make. But anyways, on to Lewis Miley, then the injury news, then the match preview. Lewis Miley confirmed by Newcastle United and Lewis Miley himself has signed a new long-term contract at the club. Absolutely superb. I mean, this lad last season made his debut, the youngest ever debutant for Newcastle United in our history, the youngest ever assist maker for any English club in, it, in its history in the Champions League, Newcastle United's youngest ever assist maker in the Premier League, Newcastle United's youngest ever goal scorer in the Premier League, <sighs> breaking records left, right and centre, 17 years old. He's worth an absolute fortune to Newcastle United. If Enzo Fernandez, who he's humiliated around two to three times now, was worth £100 million, what is this lad worth? He's a boyhood Newcastle United fan. He's a Geordie, which undoubtedly to us, the sentimental value makes him worth £100 million times just more valuable than Newcastle United. The sentimental value, he's a Geordie, he's a fantastic player right now, and I'm going to say it again, the kid is 17 years old, he could easily have another 15 years in Newcastle United. Long-term contract, hasn't been discussed how many years it actually is, but long-term, it's very, very promising. And Fabrizio Romano has said that he's going to get a significant pay rise, which, let's be real, he's pretty much earned it. I mean, 17 years old, he's made the absence of Sandro Tonali look non-existent, that's pretty rich coming from me, because I absolutely adore Sandro Tonali. As you know, he's my favourite a player but the injury update for Aston Villa tomorrow doesn't look the best whatsoever but still 
it's pretty much what we expected. Of course, we just played Fulham a couple of days ago or a few days ago, and now we've got this game. It's coming pretty thick and fast, but then again, we do have a pretty big rest until our next game. Craig Hopers give us this, of course. Eddie Howe did, did actually give us this injury update. He said that Almiron, he certainly hopes to have him. There's no indication if he is going to be available to play for Aston Villa. I believe he's training today, but of course he missed Fulham due to an illness. Is that something to do with Saudi Arabia? I do actually know what's going on there. Jamal Lascelles is out for this game. He won't be available whatsoever with a calf injury. Callum Wilson, Harvey Barnes and Joe Willock are all out for this game 100%. He says that Callum Wilson and Harvey Barnes are getting close at coming back with Joe Willock just being a little bit further behind them. When on earth is Harvey Barnes going to come back? I swear to God, this toe injury has got to be one of the most freak injuries ever. He's meant to be coming back one day, then another, then another, then another. Then he comes back and he's toe. Just, honestly, it's it's the most weirdest injury I've ever, ever heard of. But finally, Kieran Trippier, who I think he... I, I can't believe what he... I think it was a groin soreness or something like that. Uh, that's what it was. It was a groin soreness that he came off against Fulham. Of course, he did get substituted for Emil Kraft in our 2-0 win. And he's okay to play against Fulham. Uh, Fulham, sorry. He's okay to play against Aston Villa on Tuesday, tomorrow, of course, which is a very, very big plus. Fantastic player. Cleared up all of the Bayern Munich sort of transfer speculation around that, that he's staying at Newcastle United. He wants to win a trophy here and he's 100% committed to Newcastle United and there's no place he'd rather be absolutely superb that's absolute music to our ears now onto the match preview for Aston Villa which I'm very very proud to bring you and uh, it's not looking good is it lads let's just get that straight off the bat it's not looking good for Newcastle United our last five away games five losses every single one five losses in the Premier League of course 19th for away form it's not good whatsoever and if we are talking about away form away form at Villa Park is absolutely atrocious lads if you want to know this right cover your ears if you are a very diehard Newcastle United fan not only have we not won at Villa Park since 2013 a decade ago we've not scored at Villa Park since 2013 a decade ago that is an absolute terrible record Although we do pretty uh, bad at Villa Park, we always seem to do good at St. James's Park and Villa seem to do terrible. So it's pretty much a, a mirror of results if you do want to say that. But Aston Villa, fourth this season, they've been absolutely superb. And to put a little bit of a downer on the Villa Park form, 10 games played for Villa Park at home. They are top of the home league, so points picked up from home, of course. They are top. Uh, 10 games played, 0 games lost, 1 game drawn and 9 wins for Aston Villa. And funnily enough, the only game that they did not win there this season, I believe they've beat, well, did they beat Arsenal and Man City there this season? The only team that they have not beat there this season that they've played, of course, is Sheffield United. Arguably some of the, the, the team that some people have seen the worst of. Like... They are such a poor team this season. We beat them 8-0 in the wrong ground. Like I said, arguably the worst team that some people have seen. And they've went and drew 1-1 of them. Of course, it was a very, very late goal as well. They nearly actually lost. I believe it was Gustavo Hammer. Uh, Gustavo Hammer that got the Sheffield United goal for uh, Sheffield United at Villa Park. Get my words mixed up there. But very, very obscure. They've done the hard work. They've been doing great in the Europa Conference League. Of course, we're doing all the sort of quality in that league. I wouldn't be complaining if we got that next season, but they've been doing very, very good this season. It's just got to be said. It's always good to see a team that isn't your exact Arsenal, Spurs, Chelsea's, Man U's, Man City's doing good, if you know what I mean. I know they took the mick out over years ago, which I don't really like them because they sort of done that sub on the time thing, but um, it's always great to see that. Not a massive club, if you know what I mean. It's doing good in the Premier League. And moving on in uh, Aston Villa's top players, and it doesn't look good for Newcastle. Ollie Watkins always seems to get a decent goal against us. Douglas Ruiz, he's been fantastic for Aston Villa this season. Takes penalties, of course, takes free kicks, and he's a very, very good defensive midfielder. If we could pull him off, maybe you never know. It'd be an absolute fantastic sign, and of course, wouldn't ever happen in this January transfer window. But he's a player I'd love to see come at Newcastle United, as would any team. Arsenal's been linked with him. Fantastic player. We need to watch out for him, of course. He'll be coming up against Bruno Gimaraes, both sort of pivot players, Brazilians as well. Actually, talking of Bruno, this is a very sort of big talking point, which I believe we have got. I believe it's Luton at home and Nottingham Forest away in our upcoming two Premier League games after this fixture, of course. Aston Villa I'm talking about, should Bruno Gimaraes, who was one yellow card, I believe, away from getting a two-game suspension, I think it is, should he take his yellow card suspension now? Luton and Nottingham Forest, I know we did lose to both of them, but with all due respect, on the sort of highest caliber of teams left, should he take the, the sort of penalty then, rather than risking it and not getting stuck into challenges and maybe costing with further on? I think he is going to get a yellow card in this game to sort of do that, but yet again, if he gets sort of suspended, we'll only have Sean Longstaff and Lewis Smiley as our available centre mids. 
that's not great whatsoever, is it? But even more, a uh, fantastic players for Aston Villa. I mean, Musa Diaby, absolutely fantastic. Pau Torres, unbelievable from the back. And Demi Martinez, he's a very, very good goalkeeper. Although we did stick five past them this season, which on the opening day, 5-1 against Aston Villa. That was a very, very good game. How it's unfortunately went downhill since then. 5-1, absolutely dismantled them. Sandro Tonali with an unbelievable performance, man of the match performance. That's why I fell in love with him. A debut goal for him, a debut goal for Harvey Bonds, two goals for Alexander Risak, a Sven Botman assist. It was absolutely superb. It was something I'll never forget for the day of my life. If we could just take that game and carry it on for the rest of the season, where on earth would we be now? We'd be absolutely flying, but things happen in football. And we've just got to get on with it, unfortunately. But Newcastle United, like I said, 19th in the Premier League for away form. Haven't been on the best of form whatsoever. Of course, we're doing great in the FA Cup. Beat Sunderland, beat Fulham. But we did lose our last game in the Premier League. And we've lost our last five, uh, some of our last five games in the Premier League. Of course, our last win in the Premier League. Coming against Fulham, of course, a 3-0 win which was a pretty long time ago right now. Let's just say we are so dependent on St. James's Park, but a 3-2 loss in Manchester City at home, I mean, they're a fantastic team, aren't they, lads? It was bound to happen. You, you know every single time you go ahead against Manchester City, you're not going to win the game. It's so inevitable. They are so good. They've just got a full-on winning mentality in that team. They're grinding down in the latter stages of the game. I've always said that, and I always will. They are just such a hard team to beat. It, it's inevitable that they come back every single time. But I believe this is going to be a very hard job for Newcastle United. Do you let me know your score prediction in the comments down below. But for me personally... I don't, I don't really have high hopes for this game. Of course, our away form, we are second bottom for away form. Aston Villa are top for home form. We haven't even scored there since 2013. It doesn't look good for Newcastle. As always, I'm going to back Newcastle and say 2-1. Do I think it's going to happen? Absolutely not. But do I hope it's going to happen? Like I'll always say, yes, I do. If I'm being realistic, I think Aston Villa is going to win this game 2-0. They've been on unbelievable form at home. We've been on terrible, some of the worst away form we've ever seen at the club. Genuinely ever seen at the club. That's including the unfortunate Ashley Days, which I don't even want to mention his name. Under years and years ago, this is the worst away form we've had in a very long time. But the players have had a big, big rest. They had a 14-day rest before the Fulham game. And they've got a, I wouldn't say a big rest but they still are very very rested from that 14 day gap period to this game now a three day rest between the Fulham and the Aston Villa game so fingers crossed they aren't fatigued we still do have the little excuse of injuries though which I don't really want to be using whatsoever you know it's not a sort of thing I want to look for it and say oh well we had injuries we need to go on this game 100% mentality to win it as well you let me know your score prediction in the comments below like I said I think it's going to be 2-0 to Aston Villa but 2-1 to Newcastle United in the back of my head anyways full focus on the Villa like if you do enjoy the video subscribe if you haven't already for daily content around here and we'll be producing much more content I've got a training ground vlog coming up as well so we'll see you tomorrow for the live watch along for the Aston Villa game without further ado I've been Jordy Josh go and enjoy your day people